Okay, so the question is involving cryptocurrency. Okay. I was listening to the CEO of Cardano on Lex Friedman's podcast and recently, and they mentioned something that I had not heard, which is that the country, El Salvador, has officially recognized cryptocurrency as legal tender. And then they were kind of riffing on the idea of, well, does, is this sort of a foot in the door for getting around these fiat currencies and using crypto because other countries up through the foreign exchange have to recognize the El Salvadorian currency? And, and is this sort of moving in the direction of getting away from these centralized controls of currency? And my thought was, that sounds encouraging. I mean, I like the idea of not having uh governments be able to print money and control the currency but i also thought ain't gonna happen because i mean <laughs> up to and including like there's no way our government's gonna let go of that and i think even if they had to go as far as some kind of a covert operation to overthrow the el salvadorian government and install a new one that would reverse the decision to recognize crypto that whatever it took that they would do it but but what do you think about this general idea? I mean, do you agree with me that they would just do whatever they had to do to stop it? Or, but if they couldn't, and if, if it were something that became a, a phenomenon where we could circumvent these fiat currencies, would that be, would that make cryptocurrency more appealing to you as a yeah. medium of exchange? So first, I, I appreciate your cynicism about our government. <laughs> I wish you completely, you know. I wish I were. I, I wish it were, but I think it's realistic. I think that's right. If they have to, if they have to overthrow the government in El Salvador to protect the dollar, they would do it in a heartbeat. They wouldn't have second thoughts at all. Um, I, no question about that. I mean, it's complicated because what El Salvador has done is illegitimate, right? Because what has El Salvador done? It basically is told business owners that crypto is um, is currency they have to accept. So even if they don't want to accept it, legal tender means they have to accept it. And you take a currency, a, a, a currency, it's not a currency, you take an asset that, that sometimes drops in value 10% in one day, and sometimes in an hour during the day. And I'm a business owner and you want to buy something from me. I don't know how much Bitcoin to charge you. How quickly can you get it to me? How quickly can I sell it? Because I don't know what the price will be in half an hour. It might be high. It might be lower. Uh, so it's, it's what El Salvador has done is, is very, I think, very bad for business owners in El Salvador because yeah. it forces them to accept this incredibly volatile asset as, as a currency when I don't think they would want to. It's one thing to say it's illegal to accept it if you want to. It's, and, and in the United States, anybody can accept cryptocurrency. I mean, Tesla is ac accepting Bitcoin, right? So uh, it, changing it to legal tender suddenly forces business owners to accept it, which is, which is a violation of rights and, and, and really, mm. really bad. Mm. Now, would it, what would it do? Um, it's really hard to tell. I mean, I can see uh, a lot of people who want to transact in Bitcoin would go to El Salvador to buy stuff. So maybe there'd be some increased consumption activity in El Salvador. The business owners, my guess, would sell the Bitcoin immediately uh, on the other side of it. So there's not to take the volatility risk uh, or the value risk. Uh, if Americans wanted to buy something from El Salvador, is it easy for them just to use dollars and exchange them into Salvadorian, whatever the local currency is other than, or is it easier for them to change it into Bitcoin? My guess is it's much cheaper to buy the local currency, to buy, to buy the thing that you want to buy. I'm not sure why anybody would, again, take on the, the so the exchange rate risk is much greater with Bitcoin because, because of the volatility, whereas the dollar El Salvadorian currency, the change in, current, in value of currency is probably very small, certainly on an interday basis. 
So I don't see how it changes anything. Um, now, if a big economy did it, if a big economy did it, and for whatever reason, merchants and everybody within that big economy um, embraced it, then now maybe you'd get some more stability in the value of Bitcoin because now more people would be holding it. There wouldn't be as much trading of it. It wouldn't be as speculative. Let's say China made Bitcoin their currency. Um, yeah, you would get a stabilizing effect from that, but El Salvador is too small, uh, too mm -hmm. small a case. I, I don't see, you know, if all of Latin America did it, maybe the increased demand for Bitcoin would over time stabilize it. Mm -hmm. But Bitcoin has to become a lot more efficient, cheap, and people are working on this, but it's not there yet. Right now, it's too expensive to transact in Bitcoin. It's too expensive to send money via Bitcoin. It's, as I've said before, much easier to use something like Venmo. Um, mm -hmm. and, and now you've got fintech companies that are doing um, uh, exchange rates. So they're matching buyers and sellers of dollars. Now, I don't know if it applies to uh, in euros and things like that. I'm not sure if it'll apply to El Salvador because, again, how many people want to hold El Salvador currency? Which I should know what it is, but I've, I've, it's one of the few countries I've never been to. So uh, I don't know what the local currency is. Um, so if, uh, if, if we're saying the U.S. government, you know, would go so far as to overthrow El Salvador to, to thwart crypto, then it certainly seems uh, a lesser step would be to take, you know, 10 billion, 50 billion and run a, a shadow trading desk to keep the price volatile. So that seems well, like a, that'd be a lot yeah, easier yeah. than growing. I know we're half joking about all this, but so I, I'm half joking too, but a common cr uh, criticism is that it's so it's so volatile, and then another one is that um, the you know the mining operations use fossil fuels and are bad for the environment. Then the CIA yeah. could totally set up some uh, you know some fossil fueled fired uh, data centers and server warehouses to you know sabotage the environment and uh, and then you know buy and sell at at a loss to manipulate it the volatility. So I'm half joking, but God, you know, I hope not? nobody for the Fed. The, I hope nobody for the Fed is listening, and you're you're giving them all these ideas yeah. on how to destabilize Bitcoin. Um, I uh, oh my God, I uh, I'm saying oh my God to, to I, there's a there's a there's a socialist I think on the on the chat who's um, I am uh, I don't. I, while I wouldn't put that beyond the government, I don't think it's necessary because I think Bitcoin trainers are doing it themselves. And look what's happening in China. I don't know if you've seen what's happening in China, but China's basically kicking out of China all the Bitcoin miners. I think because they're consuming so much of the electricity that China is, ha is, is just having to produce electricity for Bitcoin miners. And uh, for whatever reason, they've decided that's not a good deal for them. Or maybe they think Bitcoin is destabilizing things in China. But they're kicking out all the, all the miners, which has caused a drop in the value of Bitcoin. But look, I, I don't think Elon Musk is a uh, CIA um, plant, but he might be. I mean, I wouldn't put it beyond Elon Musk or the CIA for that matter. Uh, there's a now we should I should tweet that because that could that could really go viral. You know, <laughs> Elon Musk is really a CIA um, plant uh, planted to destabilize Bitcoin. So to sustain the U.S. government, it's all a Democratic, a Democratic Party plot to that would that would just take off. There you go. That would yeah, take yeah. off. Yeah. Um, it's to undermine that's... Trump. So he can't get reelected. Yes, yeah, so it's undermine I mean, Trump. Yeah. There you go. Get, and it's 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 now all... you got a viral conspiracy. There's 20,000 subscribers right there. God, that's right. I'd be at 100,000 <laughs> tomorrow. Um, but it's it, somebody's gonna somebody's gonna uh, transcribe this and put it up. Um, but they don't have so they don't have to right now because of uh, Bitcoin is doing it to itself, and and it's natural. Look, it's it's a new asset class. It's nobody quite understands it. 
the number of people who do are very passionate about it and are buying it like crazy. Um, and um, even if it's legit, which I don't think Bitcoin is going to be money in the end, because I, I, I just I don't think it I don't think it can compete. But even if it's legit, uh, that until it gets a certain level of acceptability, it's going to be volatile and it's not going to serve as a medium of exchange. So uh, all of this is just a natural evolution. I think much easier than that is going to be what the feds have already started doing, right? They've already announced that they're considering that if you do a transaction in Bitcoin that is larger than $10,000, you have to report it. Just like if you do a cash transaction, like if you, if you, uh, if you do a cash, if you bring $10,000 to the bank in a suitcase, right? Uh, in hundred dollar bills or whatever, uh, the bank has to let the Fed know that you did it, right? If you come into the United States and you, ha you have to fill out a little form, US citizens have to fill out the form or you do it on the little computer. One of the questions is, do you have more than $10,000 in cash on you? And they can stop you and search you and confiscate the money if it's more than $10,000 and you haven't let them know. So the government wants to know about any movement of $10,000 cash. Now they want to know, and they've already indicated, they want to know movement of $10,000 of Bitcoin. Now that takes away anonymity, um, which is the biggest value of Bitcoin. And it, it, it now how, how did they match? How did they, how would they check on this? I don't know, but how did they check on cash? They'd have to literally search you. Um, the next steps are regulatory steps. And they're just going to, regulate the thing so that they keep raising the cost of engaging in it till they wipe it out. Um, that's the, that's going to be the long-term strategy if they view it as a threat. I think right now they're not yet viewing it as a threat. China is obviously, that's why they're kicking out the miners. Um, and the U.S. might at some point, right? But uh they're not, they don't view it as a threat yet. Otherwise, you'd see a lot more regulation coming down the pipe from the Fed. Yeah, and they can just criminal, criminalize more and more of it, regulate and criminalize and- Exactly, exactly. And, uh, and then just raise, you know, the risk factor, right? Most, you know, I, I don't own any Bitcoin or any crypto or anything, because I, but uh, I, mean, I have too much to lose and I can't screw around with that for, you know, a marginal, a marginal benefit, maybe, so. Uh, it's yep. pretty shocking yeah. how fascist they are with like monitoring all of the movement of money and everything. It's it's essentially illegal to have any kind of privacy in terms yes. of financial dealings that have nothing to do with the government. And by the way, one of the reasons that uh, some countries in Europe are trying to ban, they're basically trying to get rid of cash. So they want to make it impossible for you to use cash. They want to basically make everything electronic because they can monitor everything electronic. They can't monitor. If you walk into a store and pay cash, nobody knows you bought what you bought. But every time you pay a credit card with a credit card, there is a permanent record that you paid, you bought something. If there is no longer any cash, if cash disappears, they have access to every transaction you make and, and privacy is completely out the window. Now there are efficiency reasons to get rid of cash. Cash is inefficient. You have to lug it around and, and so on. I don't like using cash, but if you want to, if you care about privacy um, and the more you care about privacy, uh, the more you want to use cash and certain uh, like in Scandinavia, certain countries have um, made a very, uh, have, have introduced proposals to make it very difficult to use cash. The other issue about privacy is when you pay cash, and this is the, a big part of their excuse for doing this, that's how you um, get around tax regulations, right? If you, if you buy stuff with cash, they can't monitor you. So you could, uh, they don't, they can't tell if you've, uh, if you're living beyond your means in a sense, uh, which is one way they catch tax evasion, evaders. So, uh, but if, if everything is electronic, now they can go after you. Where did you get this money? How can you afford a Porsche? Uh, you know, you don't make enough money for a Porsche. So you must be in the black market. You must be doing something or you haven't declared some taxes or something. So, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, this is, this is the state 
trying to monitor our behavior so that they can uh, so that they can control us and they can take our stuff. And uh, and they're getting very good at it. And the whole argument about Bitcoin is that it would allow us to avoid state control. And that's exactly why the state won't allow it, right? That's exactly yeah. why the state is going to come after them and, and stop them. Uh, yeah. So, if it, it, you know, I think, I think the only value that Bitcoin has, right, the only real value Bitcoin has is anonymity. Um, and, uh, it, you know, right now, it's, it's at $30,000 a Bitcoin, right? I think that's the latest, 31, 32,000, something like that. And, and that means that uh, that's how much people value anonymity. What they're paying for is anonymity. What they're paying for is the ability to do things that are either illegal or they just don't want tracked. I think mostly illegal because it's very expensive, again, to trade in Bitcoin. So it's, it's people who want to do illegal stuff are the ones who are setting the marginal price of Bitcoin. Um, and I don't see in a free market why anybody, why Bitcoin would have value beyond that. And of course, in a free market, there's very little that's illegal in that sense in terms of buying and selling. So what would be the point? What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there. Help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at yourunbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>